under construction right now. See, it takes two men to operate this, uh, this, uh, cut, this, yeah, this process. We have one man up on top welding the back. He's sitting on his nose right now. We have one man here on the floor doing a, a, weld, a weld steam. You notice these little things sticking out through here? This is designed so that <laughs> to handle pressure. A regular piece of quarter inch steel here would belly under pressure. And so these things go through from the outside into the inside. And they stick out through all once again to get a good tight fillet weld the whole way around. And they get very good penetration between here and here. And this is all sealed up tight on both sides. This is a three quarter inch rod that goes from one side into the other. Notice this is, this is the thickness of the water jacket inside. Water is between here and here. So this is about six inches of water the whole way around here. And uh, once again, giving us not too much water, but sufficient. So we're actually looking at the bottom? This is the bottom. This is looking at it from the ash pan side. The ash pan will go on here. This is the floor right in here. So you're looking at it from the bottom up. He's standing on his face with a door to go. This is the top. This was set up getting built for biomass. Notice the uh, high quality steel. This is all, all right. Uh, we don't use anything cheap in our construction. Everything comes out of American mills. So these stays have not been welded on this side. And here you see that these stays are just tacked together. Uh, the other side was welded solid. This side didn't get done yet. Uh, they will lay this thing over on it on the other side next to do these. And these will get welded the same way. They're just all tacked together. So you cut the chimney? Yeah, that's uh, it's on the top. You can't see it. It comes out the back and goes through a transition box to okay. head out. So that's not attached yet. That box is made out of stainless steel. Because of our super high efficiency, our stack temperatures are run fairly low, and so it, it is possible to get chimney condensation. And so <clears throat> this box is made out of three O4 stainless steel, and that prevents any possible corrosion occurring from, from a, a any time you might get condensation in the chimney. It's easy to access them, to clean them out, the other nice thing about the box is it's big enough that it actually acts as a fly ash trap. So that if you get, if you're burning, uh, burning for instance, biomass, and you get a lot of fly ash circulating through the firebox and then through the fins, so it gets down into here. When it goes out the back, it comes out, the, changes direction to come out the top, then it, um, that fly ash drops out. And then there's a little clean out on the back um, to... Uh, be able to take off and clean that out, which you should do every time you clean the fins like I showed you before. This is the port for your all your gauges. Uh, three quarter inch fittings go in here, controls a pressure relief valve, temperature pressure gauge, and then this will be for an override safety aquastat so that if you have an overfire situation, for instance at the bottom door, ash door doesn't get shut correctly and can still get the fed, fire can still get fed through natural draft and the water temperature in the boiler climbs slowly. If the, once the water temperature gets above safe point, which is 200 degrees, it'll automatically, this is circulated, this aquastat will automatically start a circulator to dump some heat. We recommend that circulator be the biggest zone in the building. If it's uh, your kitchen in your house, if you're heating your house, if it's, um, maybe it's uh, a kiln, if you're heating a kiln, while well, you would start up the circulator for the kiln just to get rid of some heat. <laughs> and then this would be for your aquastat. In this case, this one will get, the probe for the for the biomass sensor, and this one will get the aquastat that runs the front fan and the side fan to the top. And then, of course, these are your exit ports for the hot air. I mean, for the hot water, uh, two and a half, two inch, two inch ports. Uh, one in the front and one in the middle. The front one gets welded in three quarters of an inch. Gets stuck in three quarters of an inch. This one gets welded flush. The purpose for that is that so there's sometimes, especially when you're hooking up your boiler for the first time, you'll get air coming back into the boiler from your pipes. And this creates an air trap. If you put an air scoop or an air bleeder on here, the air that comes into the boiler will exit out here rather than sending it out through your circulation system. And so if you're only going to use, only need to hook up one zone, use this one. 
If you need both of them, you can use both of them. But if you only need to use one, use this one, and then just use this as an air eliminator. The same way is true in here. All of these get welded in three quarters of an inch, so that this is the only place the air can get out. That way, your controls and everything don't have a chance of getting an air pocket around them so that they read in accurately. Uh, warranty on the Glenwoods, we guarantee that they will not rust through or leak for 20 years, and that's a non prorated warranty. That just simply means that if you would have a claim in 10 years, <coughs> so you have a leaking boiler, whatever, um, we don't just say, well, you got half of your life out of the boiler, you pay half the fixed repair bill, we'll pay half the repair bill. That will be a prorated warranty. But a non-prorated warranty means that if you have a claim in 19 years and 11 months and 29 days, it leaks. You call me up, you got a, a warranty that's, that's as good as just that is just as good as the day you bought it. So that if you, if, yeah, so you have no issues. Some manufacturers require that the puller get sent back to the, the, the uh, manufacturing facility for repair. And sometimes that may be necessary. So far, that has never been necessary for us. And a few times I've had to do it on the field, I've paid a certified water to just go to the job site and fix it. And like I say, that's only happened once or twice. And the whole the few times that I've done it, I think I can still count. I live for sure two hands. I still think I can put them all in one hand. So that's pretty good after 20 years. You can't really beat that. So warranty is... I don't know where you can get another warranty that isn't prorated. That shows you how much confidence we have in their longevity. We have Glenwoods that were built back in 77 that are still in operation in 2015, so we're pushing 40 years on them. And uh, that's, that's really good. You can't hardly get away from that, or better than that. Uh, this particular design is even a better design than was built back in 77. So uh, we're a small company based in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, and uh, we'd be happy to, to have you come visit us. Thanks, John.